Sulfur is the fourth nutrient and in the canola growing region of Western Canada we know that very well because canola requires a lot of sulfur. So uh, the farmers who grow a lot of canola do a pretty good job of applying enough sulfur. But there's a few things that we have to think about in terms of why we need to look at this more carefully. The Clean Air Act removes sulfur from the atmosphere so there's simply less atmospheric sulfur landing on our soil for crops to use. On the other side, even in the canola growing region, we used to grow canola every four years in a long rotation. A lot of farmers grow canola every two years, so they re are removing a lot of sulfur. Remembering that canola removes twice the amount of sulfur as any other crop. Even on top of that, uh, other crops do remove a lot of sulfur. So we think about canola, but canola is in a rotation. So if we apply sulfur to your canola crop, we have to remember that that sulfur might be feeding the next wheat crop or oat crop, or in areas that grow corn or soybeans in rotation, corn and soybeans remove a lot of sulfur. So there's a lot of different angles to why we do need to pay very careful attention to the crop sustainability of sulfur. There's a number of fertilizer options when it comes to correcting sulfur deficiency. Now, first of all, uh, we would like to see sulfur in the soil in a sulfate form immediately available to the crop, which we can supply if we want to correct sulfur deficiency through using ammonium sulfate. It's readily available, we can apply it before seeding, at seeding or soon after seeding and get good responses to uh, sulfur and correct deficiencies on the spot. In some cases you may want to rely on elemental sulfur products for various reasons. Products like uh, MAP MST. You have to again sit down and decide what is right for your farm and if it's ammonium sulfate or smart nutrition MAP MST, develop a long-term plan to how you're going to supply sulfur to each of your crops.